Welcome to another episode of Real BMX Racing the Podcast. Today's show is sponsored by 110% Nutrition, BMX Connect, Answer BMX, Extreme Squared, Eddie's Blocks, with a special shout out to Toby Henderson over at Send It. Today's guest is USA BMX Vet Pro KJ Romero. KJ, welcome to the show. KJ Romero, Vet Pro. I've uh, been racing for uh, 26 years, almost 27 years. Started when I was five, so uh, grew up, born and raised in Tucson, Arizona. Um, moved to South Carolina about ten years ago, and been living in Rock Hill for probably seven seven years of that. So, uh, yeah, luck, luckily lucky enough to have Rock Hill as my my home track now. How did you How did you end up getting to South Carolina? Uh, met my wife racing. So she used to ride? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, met her racing and uh, one of us had to make the move and um, I didn't really have much going on in Arizona. So figured I'd try it out and here I am. Yeah. 10 years later. Nice. Do you miss it? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I miss miss my friends and I miss the, the weather. I miss the 120 degrees <laughs> summers and I'm like, uh, yeah, I know it's brutal out there <laughs> yeah and the it just rains a lot here so yeah still haven't gotten used, still haven't gotten used to that but it's all good but there's no super cross tracks out there are there <laughs> uh, I, mean, I think california the otc is i think really the only super cross track tracks okay. Do you know how many Supercross tracks we have? I meant to look it up the other day. Somebody asked me, and I had no answer for them. Do you know? Uh, not off the top of my head. Um, we got Tulsa, Rock Hill, Oldsmar, Sarasota, uh, Houston. Mm -hmm. Rock so Stars. Yep, so that, that's five that I can think of off the top of my head. Because um, is there only two in Florida or three? I don't sure. even know. I know yeah. they got a bunch of tracks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they got it going on for sure. Sue, so do you remember your first bike? Uh, yeah. I I don't remember the model, but I remember it was uh, a red line. I want to say it was a red line chromoly, probably a, a mini. Um, that was my first bike. So it sounds like you don't have it anymore. No, no. It's long gone. I don't remember what happened to it. So when it comes to racing and as long as, long as you raced, was there ever time that you felt like you just didn't want to do it anymore? Yeah, quite a few times. I would uh, just take a break and then uh, just have that fire come back. It, it's it's hard to step away from BMX, especially if you're in it for so long and like 99% of the the people that I know and hang out with are involved in BMX. So it's, it's hard to kind of step away and, and, you know, step away completely. So yeah, I would, I would take breaks and then I would, I would come back eventually. So. And were they like what mental breaks, physical breaks? Um, well, when I was younger, I, I, I took a break and uh, my friends, the kids I was hanging out with at school were uh, skaters. So um, I kind of got burnt out uh, with BMX, so I, I started skating for a little bit. And then uh, once I kind of plateaued, I was like, you know what? I'm going to go ride my bike again. <laughs> and did you just jump right back on? Did you feel like you even missed a step? Um, I didn't feel like I did, but everyone else was just so much faster. You know, when I, it was, I, I want to say I was probably 12 when the first time I took a break. Mm -hmm. So that's like a, a, a key point you know, key transition. So if you, you take a break, everyone's growing and, you know, they're all firing off, getting serious about it. So I want to say I took maybe 10 months off. And when I came back, it was like, whoa, these dudes are fast. So that, that seemed around the time where I was, where there was summers that, you know, there was kids I was smoking and then the <laughs> summer will come. These guys will grow six inches and get really big <laughs> and strong and come yep. back and just dust me. You know, yeah. I, I wouldn't grow, you know, so. Yeah. Seems yeah. Like that's, how... that's kind of how I was too. I was always the the little guy. And then probably 15 is when I, I hit my growth spurt and then just brought me up to average. 
Oh, so before that, being the little guy, what did you do to like gain an advantage? I'm, um, the little, I'm the little guy. I need to know. <laughs> well, when I was uh, when I was little, I I didn't really have an advantage. So my first rates were always terrible. If big kids kind of come close to me. I'm like, oh, you guys can have it. So I, I would always have to work my way around the track and try and mm -hmm. pass people. So that's kind of translated into to now. Um, I'm, I can really work my way around the track and my first rates are still not, you know, the best. I was asking that because I, I just try to make my bike as light as possible. I always ran like a tooth under everybody else just because I felt like everybody was stronger. So I needed that, you know? Yeah. I remember when I was younger, I always ran a harder gear. So, I, uh, I mean, I don't know if it would work being bigger or, you know, an adult, but when I was younger, I would have a you know a shitty first straight and then first turn i would always just rail the top and gain speed and then i would kind of make my way around people <laughs> so okay so i i, I remember i asked you a couple of weeks ago what was your <laughs> what was your your time at the uh rock Hill? what was your yeah. fastest time yeah so you know how fast you are and you know how slow we are how many seconds do you think you could beat us by oh <laughs> I, like like a true number. You're not gonna hurt our feelings. I I don't remember what my fastest time was. It was like a 35, seven or something. I can't remember exactly. Uh, maybe four or five seconds. Maybe. I, don't know. I mean, I, it's hard to like the distance. I you could I could visualize, but I don't know how much that would translate. Yeah. Like the, right, so yeah. you pretty much think you could get us by a whole straight. Yeah, well, you think five seconds would be the last, the whole last straight? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> that sounds about right. If I'm not just, more. <laughs> I'm just thinking to myself on the third straight, looking at him in the fourth straight and passing. Right, him. right. Yeah, look back. Yeah. He's about to finish. <laughs> <laughs> that would be a good challenge, man. That would be cool just to see yeah. if we could even stay within the same straight. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> so how? Okay, so you've been so you've been here for ten years, right? When you moved in, was Rock Hill already here? Was everything already going? Um, no, the track wasn't here, um, but it was kind of already in motion. And I believe, I, if I remember correctly, I was like a year that I was living in South Carolina when um, you know the word started getting out. And you know, there's a Supercross come Supercross track come in up to, <clears throat> sorry, uh, Rock Hill, and uh, it it stayed stagnant. Like they built the track. And it was like a year where it just sat there and, you know, with all the rain, all the rain we get here, it would, you know, it would just get washed out. So it was like, man, you know, when's this place ever going to get finished? And um, if I remember correctly, they, they, cause it sat for so long, they rebuilt the track wow. um, and then finished it. That, at least that's what I remember. Um, so don't hold that to me. <laughs> I mean, so do you have any idea how long it took from the time they broke ground for the place to be finished? You know, like finished the first time? Uh, you know, from when the, the project first started until opening? Yeah. Well, not opening, opening, but when it was like complete the first time before it just sat. Oh, I, I, I really don't know. I'm just curious um, how long it takes to build a facility like that. You know, since mm -hmm. they're talking about the new Kernersville one, if that goes through, I'm just wondering how much longer are we going to wait till that's <laughs> open? You know, that's a lot closer yeah. to me. Yeah, I, I'm not sure, to be honest. Gotcha. But I do remember it sat for a while because <laughs> I, I used to work, well, I lived in Columbia, South Carolina, and I would drive up to Charlotte for work. So on my oh. way home, I, I would, oh. you know, stop to – to check out the progress and it, you know it was the same for a long time the hills were built but the track would you know it was it was built but it would just get washed out because it sat for so long that's crazy were the soccer fields already up there uh i can't remember okay i don't have you know my main focus was the track <laughs> i didn't care about the soccer <laughs> field so you you've been all over the u.s what would you say <clears throat> your top three uh favorite tracks are Ah, uh, I don't know, <laughs> to be honest, obviously Rock Hill. Um, but if we, you know, that's my home track. So obviously, um, if I had to think of other tracks, I would, I would say, 
<laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I've, I've had a I've had a cough for like six weeks. Um, I would say Oldsmar is one of my uh, top ones. Uh, dang. Nashville. I love Nashville. Um, I can't I can't think of any other other tracks off the top of my head to be honest. What so okay then so I don't oh, know the tracks. Uh, Lexington BMX. Really? Oh, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. Lexington's it's been the I, same. It's been the same for so long, but it's so good. Yeah. I was say I've been there twice. Yeah. But it's like it's hard for me because it's almost it's like two, two and a half hours for me to get to Rock Hill. Yeah. It's an hour and a half past that, I think, is what it is for me to get there. Mm-hmm. And uh the one I remember the one time I went, I got motoed and I literally just sat there going, I drove four hours for <laughs> literally ten minutes of racing, and I'm going home. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I don't think I'm coming back, but that track was smooth. I can yeah. tell you that. Yeah, if if the turns were updated because they're they're so old, I would say maybe probably fifteen years. Oh, um, uh, so they're starting to crack and real getting real bumpy. Um, mm. If the turns were updated, it would be it'd be really good. I mean, it's good now, but right. you know, obviously that would make it better. So, how far do you live from Rock Hill? Uh, about ten minutes. Jesus, <laughs> depending on the stoplights. <laughs> you know, like a, a Saturday morning, maybe six minutes. <laughs> <clears throat> so how often would you ride that track like during the week when you were at your like most active time? Uh three 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 times, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Saturdays, if I'm you know really training. Oh, so just their regular practice days then. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you don't so you don't have the keys to the city, you just can't show up when you want and ride? <laughs> no, I wish. Really? That'd be sick. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I could get on these, uh, these morning sessions, like all the other pros that live in Florida. Be nice. Especially right now in the, the winter time. Cause it, you know, sun goes down and it's like, you know, 40, 40 degrees, which is cold for me. I'm an Arizona boy. Right. Right. <laughs> when you say morning sessions, what time are we talking? Uh, I think the Florida boys are usually in old or, or Tampa at like nine in the morning. So they got to ride before it gets too hot, I guess. Uh, yeah, I guess. And they got to ride in the morning and, and gym in the afternoon. I, I don't know. I don't know what their programs are like. So I mean, during the summertime, do they even ride? Yeah, I think it's like the same time, I guess, before it gets hot. It's just always hot, man. Have you spent yeah. enough time in Florida to like know that? It's just there's some <laughs> areas, I swear. Yeah. It's, it's, it's hot like 2, 3, 4 in the morning. It's still yeah. 90 degrees, man. Yeah, I don't understand why people would want to go there. <laughs> UMAX, I get it, but like to go live in that, why? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I can't do. I can't do the humidity. Right. You know, sweating. Uh, I'll. I'd rather burn than melt. Like I said, I'm an Arizona boy. Yeah, you get heat, just not the humidity. Yeah. 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 So okay, so you were pro, and then now you're vet pro, right? Mm-hmm. What would you say the biggest difference is from going from one to the other? Mm, uh, the, I don't know. I wouldn't really call it respect. Um, cause obviously you respect your other riders and, and pro, but, uh, it's, it's like, a, it's a different kind of respect in, in, uh, in vet, you know, like, we'll we respect each other, but we're going to race each other hard, but we're not going to get, get too close for comfort, you know, and in, in pro it's like, you know, whatever happens, happens. But in vet, it's like, ah, uh, you know, maybe I, maybe I'll, you'll chill, or I'll try and pass him without touching him, <laughs> kind of thing. That's so, cool. and and most of us were all dads. So, sounds like a friendlier class. I just heard people going to pros, you know, and they're like, hey, you know, they're walking the stage and they say hi to a couple of people, and they'll be like, like, who the hell are you, man? Why are you saying <laughs> hi to me? Like, you have to earn that, you know. It just seems like Vet Pro, they already went through that. You know, you guys are just cool. You're out there having fun. Yeah, yeah competitive, exactly. but, you know, it's more of a fun thing, you know. Yeah, for sure. Very cool, man. So would you say one of the, I guess, another big feature to all that is the fact that, because what I'm hearing from the pros is, um, what do you do for fun? What do you like to do? What are your hobbies? Was this? And it's always just, I ride my bike. I go to the gym. Like, there's really not a life outside of BMX for them. 
-hmm. And now that you're a vet pro and it sounds like you have your life back to where now you can enjoy your life and get to writing where it's more of a pleasure versus a, I got to win. Right. Um, kind of, you know, I'm, I've, I'm, <clears throat> I never really had the, the winning mentality when I first turned, uh, a pro when I was, uh, I want to say when I was 19, um, you know, I was, I was really confident and I was, I was like, I'm going to win, you know, every, every, every time I got in the gate, I was like, okay, I'm going to win. I'm going to win. And then, uh, I moved up to double a and I was like, all right, I, you know, getting the main events. So my confidence was just through the roof. Um, and I did that, uh, you know, first year was, was awesome. You know, I was like fifth in semis every time. And, I, and then, um, the next year it was like, all right, I get moted one race and then fifth in semis, fifth in semis. Then the following year, it was like motoed, motoed, motoed. I'd make a semi every now and again. So it just kind of like my confidence just started here and just slowly down over time. But uh, I was never really the top guy. So I never, never really had that kind of pressure. Um, and last year was like the first year that I, I really put all my eggs in one basket and, and tried to win. Um, but uh, this year, I, I just kind of like, I don't, I don't know what, what my plan is for this year. I just kind of kind of got burnt out last year. Right. Right. Um, unfortunately. So now I'm kind of in limbo right now. <laughs> so with, with the point system, is, it, is, there, is there a time for you to be able to like still kind of go hard, but take it easy and still be in contention of it? Or um, is it something that you got to like, you got to grind all year for it? Um, well, luckily, uh, we had the opening round in Sarasota, you know, the, the first race of the year was a pro race and our next race for vets or pro isn't until Houston and, you know, like mid to late April. So we have like four months off. Wow. So, um, yeah, so realistically I could, um, cause I haven't touched my bike since Sarasota. I, I took a week off after because it was that was kind of like the start of our off season. Mm -hmm. um, so I took a, a week off and then I got sick and then I've had this lingering cough and just everything kind of piled on each other. Motivation's low. So, um, but yeah, if I, if I got back on it right now, I think I could probably be ready for, for Houston. I think we have a little over a month. So, and then, and then worlds, that's like the next one for, for me at least. Oh, so you are, you qualified for it already? Yeah. In Sarasota. Nice. That's why I went to Sarasota. Literally. That's the only reason I went. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen, I've avoided that track for several years because it does not look fun uh, in videos. Right. And once I found out it was a world's qualifier, I was like, man, I'm, I guess I have to go. So, right. and I wasn't going to go to Virginia. I didn't want to ride a, you know, a, a small indoor track. Right. So, and luckily I did go to Sarasota, um, cause it was like a, I think we only, only had like five riders for masters. So it was a pretty, pretty easy qualifier. All the other ones they've had, you know, over like 10 riders and you know, there's like five or six fast dudes. So, so are you in the training mode right now for worlds? No, <laughs> like, <laughs> like I said, I haven't touched my bike or the gym since Sarasota. I mean, so when would you start training for that? Uh, I should be training, but <laughs> I hadn't. Um, I, every week I'm like, all right, next week I'm going to start. You know, I'm on like week four now. Of All right, we're going to start yeah. next week. Yeah, especially with the, it, like, that cough and everything. Yeah, like, that's uh, that's one thing that's really holding me back is the cough because I, I cough regularly. But if I get, you know, my heart rate up a little bit, I'm, you know, I'm coughing up yeah. a lung. So I'm like, I can't, I mean, I can't ride like that. So it's like a, it's like a forced break, which is, which is nice, I guess. The, so, so you met your wife uh, racing. Does she, um, has she ever thought about going back or does she miss it? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have a kid now and she's, she's happy, you know, she's happy being here with him and she has no desire to ride. She's she's afraid to get hurt. So, yeah, aren't we all? Well, I see. I've seen him on the track before. Is he going to continue riding? Yeah, we're. Uh, 
yeah, he's just it's it's hard to get him to focus, you know. So it will be like, let's go, let's go to the track tonight. He's like, yeah, yeah, let's go. And then uh, we'll get there, and he's like, yeah, let's let's ride. And he'll do like one or two laps, and then he's like, all right, let's go. It's like, dude, come on, I just paid I just paid five bucks for practice. <laughs> so yeah, he's uh, he's he wants to ride and stuff. So we'll hopefully get him on on the track here pretty soon. We want to get him ready for the national here in, in Rock Hill and next month in March. Okay. So we'll see. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I was going to say, so the one thing that I was trying to figure out was maybe you might know, maybe it was you. Who do you think the first person was to know to pedal down the transition from the gate? That, that, <laughs> <laughs> on a super cross hill yeah well uh, i was gonna say from the from the five meter from for like oh oh uh, uh, you get can you guys do that on the eight yeah uh Whoa. people are people are doing it now often at that like point at, at that point in the transition they're still able to pedal yeah they have that, they have that much spin they can still cheese yeah. that and just the them riding it so often that they kind of get used to the the G forces and the transition at the bottom. So yeah, there's a good bit of guys that are, are starting to pedal through it. Um, some hills are, are different. So you, you're kind of forced to stop pedaling, but you know, rock hill is very mellow. So a lot of the guys pedal through it. Yeah. Right, so since we on rock hill, let's talk about rock hills. So <laughs> talk about this national coming up. The world's coming up. So when I got to Rock Hill for the first time, somebody told me that rides that track, that that was the key to that track, is pedaling through that transition. Mm -hmm. He said, bro, if you could not be scared and pedal through that transition, and you'll be the first to get on top of the table and just be going, you know? And it's, it's the scariest thing in the world because, and then especially if you ride local tracks, the hills are not that big. It's just not that nice. It's just it's not that intimidating. It's just something mm -hmm. about it when you get there. It's just a nice facility it's just you feel like you need to have a, a certain level of skill to ride the track you know then you get up there you look down you're like oh my god bro i've yeah. seen kids walk up that hill turn around and come back i've seen parents <laughs> i've seen parents like let their kids go and like cover their eyes yo. you know it's the funniest thing yeah so i mean so with with that i have experienced that that gate being a little slow somebody said that they sped it up recently i'm not sure how true that is but um what do you right, go in that gate when it's slow do you lean back a little more do you just hesitate for a second or um so they did upgrade the all the pro pro gate um stuff okay so <laughs> so like a new a new ram and you know <laughs> sorry um yeah new ram and all like the the components and stuff so it is it it's fast now um they, I guess they had to slow it down a little bit because it was, it was originally like, you know, really fast. You can hit it. Um, but I guess it was too fast and it, and it started to crack the gate. So they had to slow it down a little bit. Oh, it, wow. Yeah. But it's, it's still, you know, it's really fast. <clears throat> yeah. Cause I was going to say this, that's no such thing as a fat, a, a too fast gate, bro. Like that's what yeah. we want. I would think. Yeah. Yeah. But we don't yeah. go over it. That's how that one was. Like you go from the old gate where you you would barely even try to get a gate and you would hit the gate. And then once they updated it, it was like I can't even touch the gate. Um awesome. but but yeah, now it's 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 good now. When you're racing, do you <clears throat> do you know what gate you're gonna be in before you race? I know that sounds like a weird question, but no. Not unless I have like uh you know, like um are you saying like if we pick our gates? Well, all right. So you guys pick your gates, the vet pros. Yeah, in the main event. Okay, so like we don't, of course, we just get the <laughs> gate. We're, we get the gate we're gonna get, and we know what gate we're gonna get <coughs> as soon as we look at the live motos. Like it could be an hour or two before we racing. Yeah. Some, sometimes if it's a gate I don't like, I sit there for that hour or two, and I'm like, "Fuck, I got gate eight, bro. Oh my god, <laughs> you know." And I let it get in my head, really. So. What I did last national, I was like, I don't even want to know what gate I'm in, bro. Just let me know when I get up there mm -hmm. and just tell me then I'll get in. I only have a couple seconds to think about it. It it worked out for me a lot better. Like yeah. So I was just wondering if anybody else uses that little trick. Um, so back in the day they used to to 
post sheets of paper, you know, with the motos. Yeah. And um, I went through that too, where I would, I would check my moto an hour or two before, before my race. And I would, I would sit on it and I'm like, damn, I got Corbin, Connor, Tory. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm in gate six. Connor's in gate seven. He's going to cut me off. You know, so I'd, I was already beat before I even got, you know, before I even put my helmet on. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, I, I learned that I, I would only check my moto on the way to staging. Um, and still that, that mindset, even though it's been on online for a couple of years now, I still, I'm like in that mindset on the way to, to unconscious, you know, like not even thinking about it. And then I get to the hill and I'm like, Oh shit, I forgot to check my moto. So, uh, luckily old school's up there and he's, you know, there to, there to tell us. So yeah, it all kind of works out, but, um, I've learned to, you know, not really think about it, especially in qualifier and stuff, you know, whatever happens happens. Um, cause you know, a, a first straight is everything doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter what gate you're in. Um, uh, I mean, it does, but you know, if, if, you know, Barry's going to beat me, he's going to beat me. You know, if I can pop off a good one and be there, you know, where, whatever happens, happens. So when you're at Rock Hill and you do make the main and you get to choose your gate, what gate are you choosing? Uh, one. Uh, that's, I'm, trying yeah. to figure out, I'm trying to figure out it's one on the outside or the inside of that. Oh, right? the inside, man. That's the one you had. That's where you won. Oh, that is right. Okay. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> I mean, I don't remember. I'll send the, I'll send the video to, to Shannon like, yo, man, look at – I'm on that track, but I don't even know where I'm at. And he's like, bro, seriously, that was Georgia. Like, <laughs> you just came back from Georgia. I'm like, oh, I don't remember. It. It's getting old. It sucks. <laughs> So do you, um, do you change your gears for track or you just run that bad boy all year? Um, last year I did kind of experiment around with my gears a little bit just to, to, you know, play around with it. Cause last year was, like I said, the first year that I really, I put all my eggs in one basket to try and improve myself and, and be better every, every race. So I, I did play around with my gear a lot last year. Um, but I, I kind of, I still kind of kept it on, uh, what I would always, always run. I'd play around with something, didn't like it, go back to the original. Um, so, but yeah, typically just run the same thing. Are there any other tricks to that track that you can let people know? Like first people, I mean, there's going to be some people that are there for the first time. They never rode the track. I mean, they might get a few yeah. laps in practice is, you know, yeah. Don't know. go ahead. Um, the two hardest jumps on the track are tabletops, the first one, and then out of the first turn, those are the, the hardest jumps on the track. First one, you know, it's like a wall, you know, you're hauling ass and it's like, shit, I'm, I'm going to go to the moon. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's kind of intimidating. And then out of the first turn, you, you're hauling ass and it's another wall, you know, it's straight up. So you got to, got to kind of be careful for those. Um, protect the inside in the first turn uh you know just like any other other race but second turn there you can pedal the whole thing uh, don't got to worry yeah. about sliding out it's real right. wide open you can pedal the whole thing <laughs> i'm not big for pedaling so that uh, yeah. <laughs> i can pedal the whole thing but i'm not going to <laughs> my my legs would be done going into the third straight but if you so, if you can you can pe pedal the whole thing so is that the reason why people don't pedal in turns is that their break time that's just gives their legs a few seconds to kind of rest i mean it depends on the track um like like rock hill the, the second turn is really the only turn that you could really pedal all the way around um but uh yeah i mean like the first turn, obviously you, you go in, you might be able to sneak in a pedal depending on where you're at, but you're going to have to coast 40% of the turn at least just uh, to get the, you know, to through the turn and the transition, you, you don't want to hit a pedal. So you, you get, cause you got to carve the first turn really hard. So if you get on, get on it a little too soon, you're going to hit a pedal. 
bro i bro i did that so <laughs> quick, quick quick story yo we were in the tent i made the main i didn't I, i'm kind of riding injured so in order to not go way way hard i was like you know because cam war was kind of like you know one of the coaches of our team so i looked over he had his bike there and i said yo cam can i use your bike and i was just playing he said yeah go ahead and i'm like really bro you would let me use your bike he said yeah i said for my main he said yeah so i was like Yo, let me ride this dude's bike for my main. I never rode his bike before. It's a totally different setup that I have. I ride an OS20, you know, so I switched pedals out because he had clips in and I just rode the bike from the tent to the staging for the first time ever. Mm -hmm. Got in the gate and I'm like, this is going to be fun, bro. Because I like having fun with it, man. I don't take it too serious. Like, obviously, yeah. riding somebody else's bike in the main in the national, I'm not taking it yeah, serious. For sure. But, but he has, I guess, 175 cranks when I normally ride 170s and my bottom bracket's a little higher. Mm -hmm. I come around, hit one pedal, bro. Oh my god, that was like the first time I've done that in a long time. It scared the shit out of me, bro. <laughs> and I, and you could see in the video, I like hesitate for a second. I'm like, oh my god, I'm still up, you know. Then I kept cranking, but yeah. I will, I will never do that again, man. Never. <laughs> done. I just think yeah. it looks cool sometimes. I think you could get a couple extra cranks in, but you have to be careful where you're doing. Yeah, that. yeah. I think uh, the old school power wheelie out of the turn might. <laughs> kind of avoid that you know you lift up the front and pedal but yeah i don't think you're going to get benefit too much from it makes sense what do you um what do you do when you're downtime uh sit at home <laughs> with the family <laughs> okay um uh, play video games movies books any of that uh, stuff? um not now with uh having a kid mm -hmm. um, my son he just wants to play all the time okay. so we get a lot of a lot of play time if you know if i'm home so these like last six weeks of me being home we've gotten a lot of play time and me and my wife will sneak in and do a, a puzzle here and there we've been uh playing some uh what is it i, I bought her sorry yesterday for valentine's day the board nice. game sorry nice. oh i remember that oh yeah and then uh we've been playing a lot of trouble oh yeah yeah Got the little oh, number yeah. number dice, and then you can move spots. Oh yeah! Did you, did you ever think you'd get to the age where now you're into board games? No. <laughs> <laughs> and and puzzles. Oh, it, yeah. it gets worse. Me and yeah. another friend of mine, we sat there one day, and we were talking about our lawn and our grass, <laughs> and just for like 10, 15 minutes. And I looked over at her, and I go, "We are literally talking about our grass. Like, we are at that age where we're talking about our grass." Like, yeah. <laughs> God, we're old. I felt like I wanted to put some new balances on and just walk. Right, yeah, a little fanny pack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. What what size bike do you ride? Uh, Pro Double XL. And what size cranks? One seventy five. And do you ride the same size tires in front and back? Oh yeah. Yeah, that's for, that's that's for like aesthetic purposes. I, I can't stand the look of like a, a 9.5 in the front and then like a 7.5 in the back. It's like that just, it doesn't look right. I used to love the way it looked, but now I can't stand it either. Yeah. I, put the, I put the fat tire in the back again. I'm like, man, I can't do it. <laughs> I mean, I'm old school. We ran the same tires in front and back. We didn't. Yeah. When I was probably 14, 15, 16, I always had a bigger tire on the front. Yeah. But now that I'm a little older and I kind of pay attention to, you know, and you have your style and I'm, I'm like, yeah, no, I'm I'm running the same size tire on both. Do you run disc brake or V brake? Disc brakes. <laughs> do you ride flats at all? Uh yeah, I do. <clears throat> I I I prefer to ride flats. Um, obviously, racing um, to be competitive, you kind of need the clips. Um, unless you're Corbin Shaw, then you then you can ride flats. Um, Hold but on. yeah, <laughs> he rides flats. No, he doesn't ride. I mean, like on a regular basis. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we were young, he rode flats a lot, but I don't know about now, obviously. Um, but wow. yeah, he didn't. He didn't get on clips till I think we were like fourteen, and he was already multi nag one. So you know, he he put on clips, and he was you know like one percent better. That's and now, crazy. and that was the time you guys were allowed to wear clips like any age, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, he just whooped all our asses on on uh, flats. 
it was kind of frustrating. <laughs> so right now, who are your uh, current sponsors? Uh, Supercross, BMX, um, Fly Racing, 110% Nutrition, um, Speedline Components. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I have a couple other people that help me out that aren't like a, official sponsors. Um, Mad Cycles, BMX, they help me out with, you know, uh, bike maintenance and, you know, all the little things that I need to keep my bike going. Um, yeah, that's it for now. Okay. Do you, do you I can think of. Uh, yeah, last year I was training with Kurt Ricard. Okay. Um, I don't know if you guys know who that is. I've heard that name before. <clears throat> yeah, I think. Yeah, he was um, an elite racer from New Zealand. Uh, I want to say he was 2012 Olympian for New Zealand. He was a he was a monster. I remember when he'd come to the states, and that's when I was when he would come. I was racing against him, and I remember I'd see him with his water bottle, and he had little marks on it. You know, like how much to drink between each race <laughs> he didn't really talk to anyone he just kind of stayed and he would do these warm-ups i'm like this dude's an animal you know and he would go out and he'd whoop all of our asses and you know he didn't from what i remember he didn't spend a lot of time here um in the states but every time he would come it was like jesus this guy's insane um <clears throat> and then fast forward to to now i was he's a coach now and that's who i was training with last year um and then right now like i said i'm kind of in limbo so i i think i might um do my own thing for a little bit but <clears throat> we'll see i mean you could probably do that right now i mean you have enough experience you could probably coach yourself i mean you yeah. know what to do um i mean as a kid coming up like you know you turn expert there's a lot of kids you know just say 10 11 12 they come expert you know what that class looks like it's sick especially at nationals they're ready to give up, man. You know, and I tell them, go get a coach, get faster, get better, man. I mean, how how important do you think that is to get a coach at that point? Uh, I mean, times are different now from when I was, you know, that that young. Um, when, when I was that young, it was just like, you know, you ride, you know, as much as you possibly can work on your, your skill. Um, we didn't really know much about sprints. You know, like, you know, I didn't know what a sprint was when I was 12. Um, right. Right. The, f the first person that really introduced me to, to like training and sprints was Corbin. Um, I'd hang out with him and he's like, yeah, man, I got to go do some sprints. I'm like, sprint? What the hell's that? We'd go and he would do a couple of plyo jumps and then he would get on his bike and do like a fi uh, 15 foot sprint. I'm like, what the hell does that do? So that was kind of like the first person that introduced me to it. And we we're like 15. So, um, and I never really took advantage of it. I was, I was more the guy that would, was like a fourth place in the main event. You know, I'd, I would ride a lot, but I didn't do any kind of training. Um, uh, but uh, that's, that's a hard one for, you know, 11, 12 year olds. I would say maybe, maybe get a quote, maybe get a coach that can teach you just the fundamentals uh, and, and help you work on your technique. Um, cause there's not a whole lot of, you know, you can't be in the gym for two hours if you're, you know, 11 years old, you know, work on mobility and technique. That's, I think that's the, the biggest thing. What's been, what was your biggest injury? Uh, I broke my kneecap and oh. tore the patella tendon. Um, and I think that was like my biggest bone injury and then i uh a uh, different time i lacerated my spleen broke my uh i don't know what the bone is right here it's like the flat bone right here on the front um that was a pretty big one too um my knee i was i was out for six months i couldn't do anything Jeez. <laughs> yeah and i was 15 so you know something like that now i'd be out for at least a year maybe even longer and it, it still it still took a couple of years just to get the the range of motion back. Yeah, and it, yeah. like I said, and I I was 15 at the time, so Shannon uh, twisted his ankle at Grands a couple of years ago and took a whole year off. 
Yeah, I can. You like I can how I did that it. one, Shannon? No, I don't. <laughs> It's still uh, game. <laughs> 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 All right, so you said something about a, a laceration on the spleen. There's, there's a few people that just had that injury. It seems like it's becoming more of a common injury, or maybe I'm just hearing about it more. And what is – how do you lacerate your spleen, you know, in racing BMX? I just don't know enough about it. Um, The way I did it and the way the doctors exp uh, explain it to me, what could have possibly happened was so I, I, I was working on my, my pool manuals and I pulled this big double and I bonked it and a nose wheelied all the way across and I landed on my head and my shoulder and my body, you know, basically like folded like a taco, oh. um, uh, you know, forward like this. And the doctor said that my rib is what, what sliced my, my spleen. That's wow. what they said. You know, I'm not a doctor. I don't know if it, how that happens. Um, but what usually happens is people fall and they usually get a, a bar to the gut and that's what will happen. Or, you know, I mean, people smack lips. That's like, you know, <laughs> that's a, that's a big one too. So. Yeah. We just had an ex teammate. I think he, <clears throat> When did he get out the hospital? Ever yesterday? Uh, yesterday. Yesterday, and um, he when did that happen to him? Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. So he yeah, yeah he, he, he crashed Saturday at Blue Ridge. Ended up with a yeah. lacerated spleen. Ended up in the hospital yeah. until until yesterday. Yeah, young oh. kid. I think he's fifteen. He was racing cruiser. It looked yeah. like a bad fall too. Showing up, mm -hmm. it looked like he smacked the freaking top of the jump and just yeah. slid over and just that was oh. it. Yeah, it looked terrible, Mom. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, uh, you think about it, you. You smack a lip, you know, all everything inside of you goes forward. You know, there's bones and, you know, you're, it's yeah. possible that your ribs could do that if you just, like I said, the impact. So. Like that one time when, so when Barry crashed, you had that big old, I call it the claw, look like a <laughs> like the old baseball mm -hmm. glove. His yeah. hand was swollen. Yeah, <laughs> that was bad. I thought, right? I thought for sure he had some internal bleeding. I was like, oh, my God. You know, I think he was gonna race. I he's got like, he he hit so hard. I was like, he's definitely got a concussion. Um, you know, he collapsed lung, his shoulders, his shoulders fucked, right. and then uh, you know, he gets to the hospital and he's like, yeah, I just dislocated my finger. I'm like, what? You know, how's that even possible? So Jesus. yeah, he, you know what? I I just I think I contributed it to his workout because this dude is just so strong and yeah. solid. Because yeah. if it was me, bro, I would have broke every bone in my body, man. My ankle, even, bro. Like I swear, it's just yeah. Um, that looked terrible, man. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. I'm I'm sure that plays a a big role in it. Um, but you know, if, if anyone else, or you know, he, if he would have smacked the lip a little bit lower, you know, because he kind of hit like the top of the lip. If he would have fell a little bit lower at the bottom of the transition, it might not have. You know that force might have been a little bit more, and could have really did some damage. Damn. Or if he if that happened and he smacked his legs on the top of the lip and his head went over, he could have broke a leg. So yeah. I think just right spot, the right yeah, yeah right. Never like right. a good moment, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, that was a big one for sure. As soon as I saw it, I was like, holy shit, that sucks. You know, six weeks out from grands too, I was like, damn. And then he pops up at Grands, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> um, have you rode uh, Metro BMX out in Bakersfield, California? A long time ago. <laughs> okay, so that might be before they put that gun night stuff that uh, Homegirl was talking about, Everett. In the turns? Yeah, uh, we were just talking about turns and if their turns were paved or whatever. And they said, yeah, they put some stuff in the turns called gun night. Mm -hmm. Have you ever heard of that? Mm -hmm. All right. So it's supposed to be super sticky. Like you could, like you're not sliding on that. But if you do slide on it, it's, yeah, it's bad, it's bad bro. <laughs> like a cheese grater. <laughs> yeah. I remember when uh, I, I rode the, the Beijing replica track a few times. I remember you would walk on that track and your feet would stick. You know, you know, like. You walk wow. through a, na a nasty restaurant and the floors are you. What? <laughs> That's how the track used to be. 
Yeah. I don't I don't know why or if they had just it was like a fresh coat before me being there or what, but I remember. I was like, wouldn't that slow you guys down? I was thinking that also, but I think I'd rather be slow and safe than fast and slippery, man. You know, yeah. I'll take it. Yeah. And then when you but fall, I, you just stick. That's it. Uh, That's why I love I love windy days because everyone's always like the wind came and it stopped me, and I'm like, bro. That's like that's my weather right there. I can like I'm I'm big. I can lean right into it. I'm gonna barrel through it. Like Change that's my moment the right wind. there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, the last time I rode there, it was yeah dirt turns. How often do you get to ride dirt tracks? Um, I don't really I don't really ride dirt tracks often unless you know go to a, an indoor somewhere. Um. There's one in in Charlotte, uh, Hornet's Nest. They have asphalt turns, but the track's dirt. Um, I don't really make it up that way too often, just because it's uh, you know the traffic's terrible around practice time. Me driving up there with no traffic's like forty minutes. It's easily over an hour, you know, on a weekday at five six o'clock, and then you know Rock Rock Hill's ten minutes down the road. So you know, you Rock Hill. <laughs> and I just know, like, Grand, when I went to Grand's, I haven't been on a dirt berm in probably 30 years. And, mm -hmm. you know, coming back, everything's asphalt, every track I rode. So going to Grand's, I forgot. And I'm like, oh, my God, all the turns are dirt, bro. I get into the turn. I'm scared to death, bro. Yeah. I didn't know. I'm right in the middle, just holding on for life, man. It's so bumpy and it's just different, you know. Yeah. People, people are letting air out of their tires. They're trying to figure it all out. And the guys from... The guys that I had a race that were from Cali that raced mostly dirt tracks, they were mm -hmm. out there killing it, man. They were on the yeah. bottom, carving it low on the top, you know, riding the whole thing and just pedaling. Mm -hmm. It's just, I just figured that like a lot of people would try to get in some dirt track. Um, so just, I don't know, some time if they could yeah. you know, before yeah. brands, if they plan on racing brands. I think it would definitely help. Dirt, uh, there's, I think there's a little bit of a difference from like a, like a grands track or an indoor track where they build it that week. Um, versus like a local track that has year round dirt turns. Um, they're, you know, like a local track, the turns, they have a little more time to, to shape them and prep them and stuff. So they're like, they're a lot smoother, but at the same time they're dry, well, at least where I, where I came from in Arizona, you know, was a lot of the times the turns were dry cause you would water them five minutes later, it's dry. Right. So, um, yeah, you know, it's it's almost more slippery at those those tracks, especially if there's a little bit of dust on the on it, you know, it wasn't freshly swept or whatever. Right. So I guess they have a little more trust on like the indoor tracks because they have more experience with, you know, a, a dirt turn at a local track that's, you know, not sticky like an indoor track where they're watering it and it's not super, it's not dry impacting yet. So I guess they can trust it a little more. I think uh, this this last national at Blue Ridge, I think somebody should have been out there with a hose because a lot of people washed out in that first turn. Yeah. When they didn't brush it down, you know, like the next couple of motos, if, if somebody took it low, man, they were washing out for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that could be, you know, like the, you know, if the California rider came out, that's that rides dry turns often that, you know, they, that might, they might have excelled. And mm -hmm. something like that, you know, they know how to ride those kind of turns. Yeah, yeah. One of the things I was going to ask you too is, when it comes to racing, and you you're putting forth like your plan and everything, what do you go in? How do you tackle the track? Are you tackling it from the first thirty, out of the first thirty feet? But like, do you just like do you prep differently for each track? Is what I'm trying to say. Like, as far as when you're uh, my brain is like twisted right now, but like you know, so when you break, you're breaking down a track because I heard a lot of pros break down the tracks, you know, section by section versus just you know, it's just this is how it is. Mm -hmm. When you break down your section by section, do you just like practice it that way? Like you know, you're putting more of an effort into that part of the track. Yeah. So I I typically first thing I tackle is is the gate in the first straight because mm -hmm. that's what I struggle with most. So like. Uh, I, I put a good bit of time into the gate and getting out of the gate. And then once I, you know, kind of feel 
fifty percent confident in a gate. <laughs> That's usually as best as best as it'll get for me. Um, then I kind of uh, work on something else. So if there's like a a pro set that I'm kind of intimidated about, I'll spend the majority of the time on that. And then um, if there's an obstacle somewhere, then I'll try and tackle that. Um, usually everything else is pretty, you know, pretty much the same. So right. if there's a little <clears throat> bit of a different obstacle, um, then I'll spend a little more time on that. But I, I, I probably don't do the best, best job of prepping or, you know, going through the race mode than a lot of these other guys. But, uh, cause usually I'll, I'll hit those few things. I'll spend time on the gate and then a couple other obstacles or maybe a pro set. And then I won't even link it up until my first race lap. Um, just I hear I, that. <laughs> so it's probably not the best thing to do, but that's, that's what I feel most comfortable with. Cause the older I get, the more I'm, I question my abilities and I, I just don't feel as comfortable. Right. So, um, you know, if there's, you know, Oldsmar, there, there's a roller out of the first turn that's kind of like peaky in that, that obstacle, you know, I'll spend 15 minutes just like, all right, I need to get over this roller, get over this roller. Cause if you mess up on that roller, it's going to mess up the whole second straight. Um, so. Yeah. That, that was killing me, bro. Blue Hill, the first obstacle was a little roller. <laughs> I'm like, come on with this. <clears throat> And I yeah. rode tracks with that before, and I was able to get enough speed. Sometimes I'll just like bunny hop it or just kind yeah. of pull up over it. But yeah, that was kind of hard, man. It was it was throwing people off for sure. So you know, uh, was it last season that you Barry had your your guys' friendly rivalry? Mm-hmm. How come they don't do that in the pro class? Uh, I think it would be fun to see a couple of top guys talk a little smack, get out there, and just you know, it's all love, but I'm gonna beat you, you know? Yeah, well. At the beginning of the year, Isaac and Cam Wood kind of had that going on. Really? Um, theirs was like a, a little more aggressive. Right. Um, you know, they're wrecking each other, <laughs> taking each other out. <laughs> um, and then they both got hurt, so it kind of went out the window. Are they um, friends? But I don't. I don't think so. So it was real. It was a, it was, oh, so it was was a real rival. Yeah, that was real. Okay. Yeah, I like. I like that even better. <laughs> yeah. Um, but most people are, most of the pros are friends. Um, me and Barry are friends. Um, we just kind of had like the mutual agreement of like, I remember I, I reached out to him and I'm like, Hey dude, is that, is that cool? If I call you out on my Instagram stories, you're kind of like the only guy in the, in the class that I, I feel comfortable enough to do that with. And, you know, his platform is so big. So, um, you know, maybe it, you know, might gain my following, uh, and, and stir some, stir up some stuff. So I just started by posting a couple Instagram stories and those kind of caught traction. And I was like, you know, maybe I'll mention him a few more times in a, in a, my YouTube videos. So I, I did that. And then, you know, people, people loved it. Right. And then, uh, for the race, really cool. for the race, um, the beginning of the year last year i had really been working hard um and i had set a goal and i was like man i, I really want to to win rock hill so there was a kind of a lot of lead up to that on my part and then also barry came to town two weeks early and he had posted a couple things you know kind of talking smack and uh he's like dude let's let's do like a sprint video kind of kind of like settle this, you know, who's, who's faster. So that's what we did. Um, we did that sprint video and that a lot of people enjoyed that. Um, yeah, it's like a, <laughs> it's kind of like a fine line of, of don't go too far, just do, do enough. Cause, um, a lot of people don't, don't think that we're friends. They're like, Oh my God, I can't believe they met up and did the sprints together. That's crazy. So. I mean, that's one of the beauties for Vet Pro. There, I just feel like you guys. It's just more, uh, it's more family where it's just like you guys are all good with each other. It's like, like yeah. you said, the respect of. I'm not gonna try to get over on you like that. It's just let's just go out there, get it. Just you know, do what we do. 
Yeah. And we, yeah. we wanted we wanted more, man. And and the thing <laughs> is that and that was awesome. That really was. I think a lot of people tuned in, especially to that main, to see what yeah. was gonna happen. I know yeah. I was I wasn't missing that for anything, bro. Like that was it. I was like, yeah, yeah I gotta see this. I have to see this. <laughs> and and I knew and everybody knows this is like your track. Like Barry's a visitor. It's like, you know, like yeah. let's let's go, man. It was so awesome to watch though. That yeah, that was uh that was like the first time I had ever, you know, set a goal for myself and I did the work and I actually, you know, uh you know, came through with the goal I had set. Cause like I said, I was like, I'm I want to win rock hill because my family came in town um you know all the locals were like oh man you're gonna win you're gonna win oh my god jeez you know don't, <laughs> no don't, <pressure>. don't <laughs> yeah, no. and then you know you get in the gate like the first day it's you know nighttime and you know they're like, KJ Romero. they saved me for like the last to announce and they, oh my god i know god. everybody's going crazy bro oh man that was wild. Like, don't don't hit the gate don't hit the gate <laughs> popped off popped off a pretty good gate and and then we went into the first turn three wide me and Emilio hit and I he kind of drugged me and I fell onto him and then we all crashed so I was like damn we'll try again tomorrow I said was that the one where Barry's like seat like look like his seat exploded that was Nashville ah yeah this this year or two yeah last year yeah last year yeah okay because I remember that when everyone was like what in the world was that I always saw something go flying up yeah yeah okay yeah it kind of it kind of sucks because the two times i actually put something together and i'm in front of him something happened like um rock hill the second day when i i put together a, a for a good first straight and i went into the first turn and i was coming out of the first turn and i was in first mm -hmm. i was like yes and i hear barry barry behind me yeah kj and then, <laughs> and then I hear, and then I hear Noble's down. I'm like, what the hell? Someone took him out. And then, you know, after the race, he, he just, he had crashed himself. There's kind of like a, a dip on the top of the, the turn out of the first turn coming out of the first turn. There's kind of like a little dip. And I think when he got on, it just coincidentally lost an, a little bit of traction on the front and just, you know, he fell. Jeez. And then uh, Nashville same thing i i finally put together you know a decent first straight he kind of closed me out halfway through and uh he kind of moved out and left the, the inside wide open so i just white lined went under him and i was like oh yeah i'm i'm winning and then he stopped you know his seat fell off i was like oh my god come on why can't we just you know race to the finish line because because most of the time i you know i'll have a ship shit first straight and i'm you have to be right behind barry to to race him you know to try and get him or you know be in front of him and most of the time i'll go into the first turn and fourth fifth my race usually doesn't start till after the out of the first turn and like i said those two times i put it together and it, it didn't quite work out for him <laughs> so it sounds like you can hear the announcer when they're talking sometimes Okay. Yeah. Bit, bits and pieces. Usually like if, if something like that happens and takes me out of, out of like focusing, um, I'll hear what Grindel's saying, saying, but, uh, for the most part, if I'm, you know, if I'm locked in and race mode, I don't really hear anything, but like, you know, I was in Rock Hill. I was coming out of the first turn. I was like, Holy shit. I'm in first. And then I hear Barry, yeah, KJ. And I was like, I was like, what the hell? And then, <laughs> and then I hear, I hear, and then Grindel, oh, Noble's down. So, yeah. That's dope. So he's like just cheering for you right there. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. He, uh, he, he, we, we talk a lot on the track. Not a lot of people talk. Right. Um, so, like, if he's in front of me, he'll look back at me, where are you at? What are you doing? Are you, are you gonna where what are you doing man damn it, i'm coming i'm coming <laughs> right here <laughs> bro i talk yeah. all the time on the track man yeah I, i'm terrible with it you know? I really, yeah i mean i'm talking on the gate right before the cadence starts i'm just talking yeah and i, and I ask him does it bother you you know nobody says it does so i keep going it's just yeah funny. most of the time it's like calling my own mistakes or something like that you know i'll get loose whoa you idiot <laughs> what the fuck are you doing 
The one thing that I don't like is when you're in staging and then everybody wants to talk about the worst injury that they've heard of right before you're about to go up. Like, yeah, you know, so-and-so fell down here last year and, you know, he had to reattach his hand to his forehead because you're just sitting there like, what? Is that even a yeah. thing? Like, how's that? And then next you know, you get up in the gate and you look down and you're just like, oh, I don't think I want to ride anymore. Like, Yeah. <laughs> At uh, Louisville um, last year, I was walking up the hill to go for my semi and this kid stops me. He's like, Hey, KJ, Hey, what's up? Have you, have you ever had a, an issue with your, your derailleur and your chain falling off? And I'm oh, like, God. Oh, sh- don't, don't ask me that right before I go <laughs> race. You know, he, he, like if it falls off, if it, even if it falls off, you know, I'm out, I'm not making the main event. Right. And if it falls off, there's a good chance that I'm going to eat shit. So I, why would you ask me that right before I go up? <laughs> but good luck, so, though. <laughs> yeah, so like that's all I could think about. I'm like, oh god, please don't chain, don't fall off, chain, don't fall off the whole lap. So yeah, it's <laughs> that's funny because that's the one I use for people. You know, I look at their bike, I'm like, yo, bro, I think your chain's a little loose, man. Yo, don't <laughs> don't push too hard on this lap. They're like, nah. <laughs> then I know it's in their head though. Sometimes it's got to be, man. Yeah, oh, for sure. I mean, I, nothing even has to happen in that. That goes through my mind before every single lap. Um, I I don't know why, but the older I get, I'm like I, I don't I don't want to fall. So um, every single time before I get in the gate, I check my chain ring bolts, my chain ring my my chain ring bolts, my chain alignment, and my chain. I'll do a spin check to see if any links are out of place or or anything like that, Smart. just because. I don't want to smack a lip. <clears throat> I, I, I really don't. Not that type of lip. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, every time, especially Rock Hill, because like I said, you can pedal a lot around the second turn. Every time I pedal through that turn, I'm like, don't smack the lip. Don't smack the lip. <laughs> don't smack the lip. That step up out of the second turn every single time. In a so, race, practice, it doesn't matter. So, all right, so check this out. We're talking about injuries. You're on the gate. You're about to start. The motor before you is going on, and somebody takes a terrible crash. They're laying on the track. You're in the gate waiting for your race. They got to be stretched up out of there. You're watching all this, you know. Meanwhile, you got up to the gate. You're ready to go, man. You know, they tell you, ah, hold on a second, guys. You know, back up, whatever. Now you got to sit there. Like I said, watch this guy get pulled out of there. Now you got to race next. How do you deal with that? Uh, It's funny. uh, That happened to me twice at Grand's. Coincidentally, you know, it hardly happened happens yeah. twice twice at Grands. It happened. Um, I kind of just, uh, I don't really, I mean, obviously I'm watching to see what's going on, but I'm trying to keep my mind off of, you know, the crashing. Um, Cause like I said, I'm already, I'm already thinking about that, but um, it doesn't really add to it. You know, it's like, if I'm going to fall, I'm going to fall. Um, yeah. So yeah, and I, I, I try and, kind of be heads up um, while I'm on the track. Cause if I make a, an error on my part, you know, that's my bad, but you know, someone else cutting me off or taking my front wheel out or something like that, you know, I'd, I'd kind of try and pay attention to what other people are doing. Um, yeah. There was a, at Grands in one of our motos, um, one of the Italian riders was there and, uh, we were going down the second straight and he kind of started to, to move over to close, close the door on me. And I was like, Whoa, 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 you know, kind of, you know, <laughs> you know, you know, don't move over anymore. And we went into the second turn and Upshaw jumped from the pro set and oh. to him. And I was in the middle and I ended up running him up the turn. And after the lap, he's like, dude, if you're going to tell me to slow down, don't hit me. I'm like, yeah, I, I didn't mean to, I swear. <laughs> and I still feel bad about that. Jeez. Like I, I did, you know, I, I apologized to him probably five times. Like, yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> I'm, I'm known to do that in the middle of a race, bro. Like if I cut somebody off and it's like a friend of mine, I'm like, yo, my bad, bro. My bad. Yeah. yeah. Right. I'm usually yeah. in the back going like, no, no, that's racing, bro. I'm gonna get you in the next turn. Just go, go, go. <laughs> I did that to Barry in uh, uh, Nashville first round on Friday, like the first day we went into the first turn and we went in hot. I white lined just to, to, you know, I didn't want to slow down. So I just white lined it and he kind of carved 
and we bumped each other right. and I came out in front and I, I slowed down on the second straight and looked at him I'm like, yo, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. Right. <clears throat> and I thought he was mad because at the finish line, he just kept going. He didn't even stop. I was like, damn, he's pissed. But he was like, no, nah, no, nah, I just didn't want to stop. <laughs> <laughs> like he was racing, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so you're from so well, not you're from South Carolina, but you've been in South Carolina, Rocket area for so long. This national that's happening in March, where are the best places to eat? Mm. Uh, didn't really get out much, um, but there's an Italian restaurant here uh, called Luigi and Sons Italian, mm. and that's like our our go to if we're gonna go out and and spend a little bit of money or like a nice dinner. That's where we'll go. Okay. Um, super good. Um, <coughs> for the so most part, like... for the, for the most part though, we, uh, we, you know, Ruby Tuesdays, Chipotle, Chick-fil-A, okay. <laughs> all the usual, whatever, right. whatever DoorDash delivers. <laughs> Every, we're going to Luigi and sons. I know. Right. <laughs> it's no good. So yeah, you, get, you get a good bit of food too. It's a little so pricey, we, I mean, we made a mistake one time. I don't remember where me and <coughs> were racing, but I ended up getting. Did you get the spaghetti? I remember I ordered like some sort of like steak and whatever it was, and he ended up getting something completely opposite. But we both looked at each other's plates and we cut our plate in half. Oh <laughs> yes, yes, <laughs> I know. Like, just so, no, you, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah, because just... the portions were so big mm-hmm. that I we were just. But it was like two two different meals that shouldn't have gone together. And you know Shannon barely ate it, and I'm over there like, well, I paid for it, so I'm just, yeah. <laughs> so I'm just eating. It. That was a lot, though, man. It gave us yeah, a lot. It was definitely yeah. a lot, but that's kind of like how uh, that's kind of how Luigi and Sons is too. Me and my wife will just usually, you know, order one thing and split it because you know it's so much. If not, then we're gonna have an ass load of <laughs> leftovers. Nice. Okay. Sweet. I mean, is there anything else to do in that area? Just say you get motoed and you're not going to end up in the main and you just, you know, you want to do something, you're from out of town. Is um, Right in Rock Hill, there's there's not a, a whole lot to do. I mean, there's a bowling alley, uh, you know, a couple bowling alleys. Um, one just opened by the Rock Hill Mall. It's called Stars and Strikes. They have like a whole arcade in there and a bar and bowling. Um, but yeah, we don't really get out much, so there's I honestly don't don't know what the fun things to do are. Um, Charlotte's right up the street though, so they got like Top Golf and I was just you know, about to ask you where the nearest Top Golf was. Yeah, yeah. go go karts and stuff like that. So they have right. like a, they have a couple indoor go kart places that are pretty sweet. Nice. Um, but yeah, those are up towards Charlotte. You know, maybe like a twenty minute drive. Yeah, yeah, not bad. No. Um, I was also going to ask you too. So, are you allowed to tell us what gear you normally run? Or is that like <clears> a secret <throat> thing for you? Like the gearing on my bike? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I run, right now I run a 49.7 18. Yeah. And okay. I, I was I was running a 50 18, um, but it was just a little too hard at Grands because uh, the hill was small. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I needed a little, and the way, the way the rear end is on the, the super cross, I couldn't get a 49, 18 to, to work. Um, cause I was rushing between motos and stuff and I didn't have a lot of time to tinker with it. Right. Um, so I, I just needed a little bit, um, uh, a little bit of adjustment and also easier. So the 49.7 was a pretty, pretty good one. Um, seemed to work out like the, the first day, uh, of pro racing, I, I, I got semi, I didn't even make it out. Um, and then I, I put the 49.7 on for, for the second day and I, I made it to the main. So seemed to work out. I felt better. Right. It's crazy that that 0.3, you know, would make that much of a difference, but it did. So what is the big difference between like a gear th- that high versus me going like a 4416? I have no idea to be honest. <laughs> I I've I've uh heard that it's it spins easier. Okay. Um 
and it's less uh, less stress on your components. Um, really? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I mean, it would make more sense to me because there's more chain, you know, on the, the diameter. So, you don't right. you get two smaller gears, you know, there's there's not a lot of not chain. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I, that's just what I've heard. Okay. Um, it, it, it does, surprisingly. You wouldn't think so. Like you, you do a 40, 44, 16 and whatever the ratio is for that. And then you, you piece together a bigger sprocket and the ratio is the same. It, it does feel different. Really? Yeah. So that. does it feel, does it feel like easier or is it just. It's, it doesn't feel easier. It just feels more fluid, you know, like. Right. Um, almost right. like the, the transition between pedals is just a little more smooth. Okay. In my hmm. experience, I could be all, I could be totally no, I mean, wrong, yeah, but yeah, I mean, that could be, that could just you. be, it could just be placebo. I've heard yeah. that before from a few different people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I wanted to go there, but then I looked at my bike. I'm like, man, like the 46, I think that I have on my bike is like really close to the chain stay now. And I'm like, I'm mm -hmm. going to have to start putting spacers on and, uh, yeah. you know, so, and it's not that serious for me. Yeah. Know, so. Yeah. But they look cool as shit, though. The big, uh, the fifty. I think I like Tyler it, Tyler Brown was the first time I saw that. And I was like, "What is that?" And everybody kept saying, "Oh, that's Cali Gearing, bro." And yeah. like, "What is that? A fifty eighteen? And sure enough, it was a fifty eighteen. And I'm like, "Jeez, I mean, it looks like a dinner plate on the front. Mm -hmm. It looks so much bigger than a forty four. You know? I had never heard people say Cali Gearing until like a couple months ago. Like, really? Oh, yeah, you're running the Cali Gearing. I'm like, what the hell does that mean? <laughs> Now I'm just running a big gear. Yeah, I don't know where that started, but yeah, that's I've heard that since I Cali. came back. Yep. Yeah. Cali. Well, come on, man. I mean, you ask a stupid question, you don't get a stupid answer. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> he's like, he's like, don't make me punch you through the screen. <laughs> I'm gonna kick you through the screen. I can't punch you a big. Hey, <laughs> <Nice>, so. Um... <laughs> What else I'm, we got, man? I'm like, man, I'm good. Like, we got a lot of good stuff in here. Oh, yeah. Cool. And your signal was, like, amazing this time. I don't know what it was the last time where we kept cutting out on us. Well, last time I was in my garage, and I was mm -hmm. using the hotspot on my phone. Uh, uh, just because, like, my, my son in the background and stuff, he he was at the point where he was like, oh, I'm, wherever dad's going, I'm going to go. Right, so right. so right now he's he's on the couch with my with my wife watching TV. So I was like, I'm going to do it inside where there's the Wi-Fi and uh, you know, a little bit of better signal. And, you know, if I need to let it load, I'll let it load or whatever. Because yeah, it hurt last time, man, that we did that. Cause I think the interview came was, out really good, man. Right, and it, it was, was like, like leading we each other. Like it was our best one. Like it, it was leading up the Rock Hill. And then you won. <laughs> it was like, Jesus, we've had we like, missed like, We can't release that. He's like, well, he's like, I'm like, we can, but that's that's rough. Like that yeah. was rough. Yeah, sorry about that. Nah, yeah, it's all good. We, I mean, yeah. I thought it was gonna correct it because the program it was said that it would like you know give us yeah. some better feedback on it. So I was like, all right, we should be good. But yeah, it is well, thanks, it is. thanks for the redo, man. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Yes. Oh, one thing, because I'll see you at Rock Hill. Can I get a jersey? Can you get a jersey? Yeah, we'll share any ones with two. We both like you got any yeah. old jerseys you can give us? I don't have any old ones. I just got new ones in Sarasota for this uh, year. So uh, maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, well, if you, I mean, I'm not, yeah, I don't need really like your current yeah. ones. I just assume you had like a whole bunch of old ones or something. No, I, I usually keep one every year okay. and then put that in a box. And then, uh, yeah, the I, I don't even really give out jerseys that, mu that much unless. You know, a kid will ask ask me for a jersey, which it doesn't happen often. Um, so I'll, I'll I'll hold on to them. I don't do like the jersey giveaways or anything like that. So okay, yeah, kind of kind of hold on to them. But yeah, I just got new ones in Sarasota. Um, so you know, maybe at Rock Hill if you guys are there. <laughs> so how? I mean, being that you have commercials on the, I mean, all the nationals, they get that get ran. Uh, how often do kids come up to you and say, oh, my God, that's KJ, you're KJ? I mean, maybe uh, not ask for an autograph, but maybe just want to say, hey, what's up, KJ? Or I mean, um, You get recognized at the track a lot, I'm sure, man. Yeah, quite often. Um, I don't know how how much the, the commercials play a role 
in that. The only time I ever got any kind of feedback for the commercials was when I did my peanut butter and jelly commercial. <laughs> right. Um, which I, I, I thought of that idea just randomly thought about, oh, yeah, peanut butter, jelly sandwich. Uh, that'd be stupid. Um, and I remember I got up early one morning to, to do that. And I, I filmed it in like 30 minutes and then I, I put it all together and I was like, man, this actually turned out pretty good. It's kind of weird, but, but it turned out pretty good. But that, that commercial was only intended for grands, uh, whatever year it was, 2021 or something. Um, but it ran like the whole year after that. And so many people were like, oh man, we love it. That's peanut butter <laughs> jelly. You know, that's, peanut peanut butter 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 jelly. that's peanut butter jelly guy. I'm like, hey, what's up? <laughs> um for the most part you know like a lot of people liked it and stuff but you know a lot of my my friends or like people that were close to me they're like dude they play it a hundred times on every live feed when are you going to make a new one (laughs) like it was only intended for one race uh so cool well i guess we're good i mean we have everything that we need um Appreciate your time because I know you got a lot going on. Yeah, and for we sure. We'll see you at I guess Rock Hill. But yeah. you, wait, so did you say there's not a um a vet class, a vet pro class at, mm. at March? No, it's it's I think it's like it's strictly UCI <coughs> for the pros. So it's okay. like a U, it's a USA BMX national, right? But for pros, it's only I don't know if it's Olympic points or or what it is, but it's only the 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 usual elites. Right. Oh, so. that's why it was like some weird, like, you know how they have the icons next to the um, races to let you know if it's a pro race, if it's a UCI race during that March national, there was some weird stuff going on next to it. It was, it wasn't like a pro race. I think it just had like, I forgot what it had next to it, but mm-hmm. it was yeah. the only one out of the whole schedule that had that, those couple of symbols next to it. Yeah. I mean, it, it could be like qualification points for, mm-hmm. for worlds. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, the masters, we already had our qualifiers. I think the last qualifier is this weekend in, uh, uh, Bakersfield. So, um, because ba- masters is basically, uh, amateur challenge classes. Right. So we, j- we race with, you know, everyone else. Um, the elites are on a, on another right. Right. whole nother thing. Yeah, so, on the, on the right. schedule it has uh, the two empty stars. Which means the UCI uh, C1 and HC championship classes, and then it has the USA Cycling National Championships logo next to it, and that's the only one out of the whole series. Yeah. All right. Are you yeah. now? If there's not a vet class, are you allowed to do a pro am? If they have one, right. um, usually on Sunday. I don't know what the schedule's like for the elites. I would assume they race Friday and Saturday, right. like usual. Um, but I have no idea if there is a, a pro, a pro open or whatever, I, I probably won't race it just, uh, just cause that's another, another day out at the track or whatever. Right. Right. Um, and then, can you, uh, rate, can you race like, can you, other than, so you have to race no matter what, you have to be in vet pro. You can't go like race experts, right? No. So like pros race pros, vet pros race vet pros. Yeah. So if you're a fit pro and you want to move back to expert, how does that work? Uh, you have to get, I can't remember what the, what the number of signatures, but I think it's like five um, signatures from the people that are in like the top 20 in NAG for, you know, any one of them. In your um, class or? Yeah. In that class that you would be moving back down to. Okay. Oh, wow. So, so. Uh, they have to agree to let you back in. Pretty yeah. Cool. Yeah. Really? So like if I if I wanted to move to expert twenty six thirty five expert, I'd have to go find the the top five guys that are in the top twenty in NAG or top ten. I, I don't remember what it is. Right. I, I already used used up that one time reclassification a couple of years ago. So I'm oh, kind of I'm kind of stuck. One. You only get one. Yeah, really. In yeah. your whole in your whole USA BMX career, you just get one. Wow. In their yeah, your <laughs> lifetime. Yeah, I, I didn't know that. Yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's some some lenience on it. You know, like if I I race until I'm 40 and I take a 10 year break, you know, 
I don't think I'll race vet till I'm 40, but um, we'll say 35, you know, and I, I take a 10 to 15 year break, you know, they're going to let me come back as a, a 40, 45 to 50 expert right. or whatever the class yeah. is. Right. I would, I would assume um, that'd so, be crazy. It'd be crazy if they're like, no, no, no. So, you get the, so, so if you get the signatures to move down, but then you realize six months to a year that the competition just isn't the same, you can't, can you go back up? Uh, yeah, that's what I did. Okay. Um, just can't class back down again. That's your one time. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I, when I was a pro mm-hmm. and, uh, they decided they were going to do away with a, uh, the a pro and double in double a, they were just going to make men pro women pro. Um, I was 29 at the time and they lowered the minimum age for vet to 30. So I, I, I was kind of hanging out until I was old enough to go vet. Cause I, I want to say it was 33, the age. Oh, right. So I was like, oh man, I'll be a pro for, you know, another, another four years. Yeah. Um, and they did away with that. So I was like, well, I mean, I don't really, I, I can't really do anything. Um, so talking to a few people, they're like, yeah, man, just, just reclass the expert until you're 30. So that's what I did. I raced, I want to say I raced like three races um as expert and then when i was 30 when i turned 30 and i classed up um got a lot of hate for it but (laughs) what else am i gonna do and why why is that because you were a pro at one point yeah yeah they're like yeah man you were you were elite pro like dude i was elite seven years before i reclassed the experts you know and I, i sit on the couch i have a job you know i hadn't been riding you know, right. what am I what am I gonna do? Right. So people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I guess I guess we're good. You know, what I mean? you basically gave me a whole lot of information right there. I'm gonna uh-huh. look now. I'm like now I'm sitting there like man, I can change my gear. I don't know if my bike can handle it, but I'm looking to see if I can go big Cali gearing out there and see what I could do for a rock hill with that's, that. That's not gonna help you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's not. I'm gonna be honest with you. That's what friends are for, man. Hey, 4717, 40, I think fits on most bikes. Okay, see? See? Yeah. You know, what okay. what size tire do you run? Um 175s, I believe. Uh Tioga or Maxis? Maxis. Okay. So yeah. Tiogas are pretty tall, so that's why I ask it make your gear pretty hard. Yeah, just real. I will now that you said some Maxis are really like they're like low lower profile. Mm-hmm. So like a a one seven five uh, DTH is almost like the same size as a um, a Maxis one six zero. It's almost like the same rolling diameter, distance, whatever. So and all that all that's new, man. Or the gearing and then changing the back tire and trying to get everything dialed in. It's just like it's like too much, bro. Jeez. Yeah, that's why I don't, my bike. That's why I don't mess with mine. I usually I'll go to the track and I'll put my bike in the garage and I won't touch it, won't see it till the next time I need to ride it. I don't spend any extra time uh messing tinkering with things like that. I'm like, I got other shit I need to do. Did, did you ever race class and cruiser? At all? Yeah, yeah. When I was young, I think I raced cruiser up until I was maybe 14, 15. I hated it. <laughs> hated cruiser. So why did you race it? Uh, well, my parents kind of, my dad kind of, you know, let, let's race class and cruiser. When it was like the thing you did when you were young. Uh, like I said, times were different. Yeah, times were different back in the day. It was just. <laughs> It was just kind of like, you know, what you did, what kids did. And then once I got a little older, I just did it because it was an extra class to race. And then finally I was like, I'm I'm over it. No more. No more cruiser. Jumping back and forth. It ain't it. And like you said, it was the thing. It definitely was. Mm-hmm. Um, I just kind of just automatically just had a cruiser, just started racing. It wasn't like, oh, I want to race cruiser. I just did it because yeah. was, you were supposed to. Mm-hmm. You're like, ah, oh, an extra nag plate, extra track time. Um, and it, it, the nationals used to be a little bit smaller, I think from, you know, now you're like three, 400 moto nationals. So like yeah. you race, you race one class, you're 
transfer out first round. You got to wait till semis or sometimes even a main, you know, you're sitting for four hours back in the day. It was like you race 45 minutes later, later you go race again and then, uh, you know, just continue the day. But yeah. Okay. Did you, Oh, one other thing too. Well, I got you. Cause I just wanted to ask. So being from Arizona, did you race at all? A lot of the Cali, uh, when you were growing um, up? Yeah. Did you race the orange? Why? Ah, uh, I don't know. Uh, I really don't know. <laughs> I, my memory isn't that good. Bro, me and you both. I, I was know, like, I know, I, drink, so. I, know I, I know I raced a lot of California and visited California a lot because that was like the the hub for BMX all growing up. You know, that's where a lot of the heavy hitters came from. Now it's kind of moved to Florida. Right. You know, that's like the place to be for BMX now. Mm-hmm. Um Mm-hmm. And like, uh, I mean, back back when I was younger, it was like two whole world, two separate worlds. You know, you had NBL on the East Coast, and then you had ABA on the the West Coast. And uh, I I raced both for a short amount of time, um, and I raced for two different teams. So it was like we we when we'd go to the East Coast, we'd ride these bikes in this uniform and then you'd ride the, the west coast you'd ride a different bike in a different uniform for another team um but yeah that's pretty cool <laughs> yeah but I, I, obviously being a uh a, a arizona boy obviously i've rode you know west coast and aba more right yeah i'm more afraid like buzz gonna recognize me out here and be like, hey weren't you just on that other bike <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't remember there being any kind of conflict because, like I said, you know, NBL and, yeah, and ABA. Because I, I rode for, I think at the at the time, I rode for Prodigy for ABA. And then for NBL, I rode for Wooden Wheels. So, um, yeah, I mean, they're, you know, Prodigy wasn't in NBL and Wooden Wheels wasn't in ABA. So two completely different worlds. Mm-hmm. What um, so you've been there and done that. So a kid that's trying to get sponsored to get on a team or whatever, what what should they do? What can they do to to increase their chances of getting sponsored? Talk to people. <laughs> I did that um, a lot growing up. Um, just just made uh, relationships and just talked to people. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would assume that's kind of help me in a way to, to, um, you know, whatever you want to call me within the industry. Um, cause I, I do know a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's from a lot of that's from gaining and making relationships. Right. Um, obviously everyone wants, wants to be the best and there are certain teams that want you to be the best. And only if you are, you know, the, you know, one of the top right. guys, but, I I think for a long-term goal, um, just be yourself, make relationships, have fun. Don't take okay. it too serious. Do you think they um, need a big media presence? I wouldn't say big, but if, if you're someone that's present on social media and you're, you're doing cool things and, and consistently, I think that that's more valuable than someone that doesn't, you know, that posts on, on social media every six months and, they're win. They're winning a lot. Um, sure, for teams that are chasing a team shoot, that might be good. But um, long term, you know, if you ever do want to go pro or or make a living, um, uh, you know, being being on social media and whatnot, I think that's that's the the game. I mean, okay. s- someone, some nobody, average Joe, mountain biker that has you know, 300,000 subscribers on YouTube's making way more money than, you know, uh, uh, I, I don't want to name any names cause I don't know their, <laughs> their, what they're getting paid, but you know, a, right. a top five guy in, in USA BMX points. Right. So makes sense. That's, yeah. So, I mean, I, th- I think that's times have changed and I think you pick and choose which direction you want to go. But I think long-term, um, if you can be the best, cool. But if you're going to be the best, I think you should 
work on on uh, building your brand at the same time. Nice. And that's kind of kind of what I'm I'm doing because I'm I'm getting a little older, so I'm like I need I really need to kind of hone in on on this social media stuff. Nice. So, what, do you have your own channel? I do. Yep. And what is um, the what's it? Uh, I think it's just KJ Romero. Okay. Okay. Is it is it YouTube or Instagram or is it where's it at? Oh yeah, Instagram KJ Romero one, um, YouTube KJ Romero. Right there. Uh, <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, yeah. Most most I think for like the past four years I've been. Every video I, I post, it's usually been on the, the Supercross YouTube channel. Right. Um, but this year, I think I'm, I'm going to start posting on my channel again because I haven't really built that up. Um, we've built up Supercross to over 15,000 subscribers. Wow. Um, so I, and I, I only have like 1,500 subscribers on my channel. Right. So I, I, I feel like I kind of need to build that up um, and post more frequently. Plus it's, it's more, more genuine if it comes from my channel, you know, like I'll, I'll post like a, you know, a video on Supercross and people click on it and they're like, ah, oh, it's just kind of like almost like an ad right. or, you know, the, it's, it's a business posting a video. Um, and yeah. if it comes from my channel, it's more, personable i'm i'm not sure but at least that's the way i look at yeah, it i mean i mean you think if uh if barry posted on chase youtube channel um it would get as much traction as it does probably not he posts right. on barry noble's channel you know and he has almost two hundred thousand subscribers so <laughs> Yeah, because there's people that want to follow him and not Chase. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. Barry Nobles. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> I mean, Barry Nobles is the brand. He he just happens to ride for Chase. You know, yeah. that's his his choice of brands to ride for. Right. Um, and I think you know, I, as as um, loyal as I am to Supercross, you know, like I am my brand. At the same time, you know, we're in an individual sport. Um, and for the most part, you know, people jump from brand to brand all the time. So I kind of, I'm not saying that I'm going to do that because I've been with Supercross for over a decade. Um, I just think it's kind of time that I, I need to kind of focus on on my personal um, brand, especially with my son. He wants to to do everything that I do. So mm -hmm. he's, he's like, Dad, I, you know, like, I want to go do that too. So I'm like, you know, if I'm going to be, posting a video with my son in it. I feel like I needed to be on my channel. Right. Um, like uh, I, I had posted a video when my son was born. Um, I had went out to the track and my wife called me while I was at the track and I was like, Hey, my water broke. And I was, I was filming at the same time. So like I was, my video of me starting at the track kind of translated and went into my son's birth video. And wow. I posted that on Supercross. So I, I feel like I should have posted that on my own personal channel. Right. Um, so uh, it's just uh, just a change right now. Right. Okay. Um, I, I guess getting a little older, I I'm more sen sentimental with with little things like that. So of course. Now how now how old is your is your kid? Uh, he just turned four in December. So. So you still got a lot of time. Wait till you go back and you start rewatching the movies that you watched as a kid with them. Yeah. You, watch, you know, like I watched that. I, I turned my kids on to like the Munsters and Three Stooges, and I was like, "Look at this!" I'm like, and as a kid, I didn't know what black and white TV man. I just know I was at grandma's house watching something yeah. crazy. You know, yeah. so yeah, you no, go I, back I, and relive that with your kids. It's pretty. I've, cool. I've been meaning to try and turn my son on to uh, Rocket Power. I don't know if you guys remember that show. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Because um, I'm like, man, I grew up on that show. Because you know, action sports kind of kid. I'm like, yeah, right, that was right. that was my jam. You know, I wasn't watching like, you know, Teletubbies. I was watching Rocket Power. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was around the same time I was watching that and Invader Zim. Zed, yeah. Invader Zim. 
whatever that one was. Just, yeah. That was pretty cool to me. So but <laughs> I'm also a lot older than you. So I, but I always tell everybody, I'm like, look, I got kids. So we just, you know, sat down and watched everything. Yeah. Yeah. It was kind of funny just the other day. I was my son, because he's at the age right now where he just, la, 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 just talks just constantly. You know, there's never any silence. Right. And I, I made a comment to my <laughs> wife. I was like, you remember the the kid from the Wild Thornberry show where he was like, <laughs> right? I was like, that is my son. You know, that's Jack. Right <laughs> he just runs around, and I played, like, like, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, I, pu- I pulled up the the video. Shannon, you got anything else you want to add? Are we good? Yeah, that's it, man. We good. Thanks. We're good. Cool. All right, brother. Thank you for your time. And um, I'm going to go ahead and.